like that inner voice that you have, uh, you know, in you that constantly criticizes you. <laughs> That's your frontal lobe, like, all, all being over. No, that, that voice, I hear it from Jason all the time. Yeah. So it's not exciting. I, I, it's I was your gonna, frontal lobe or I was Jason. Say, I know my source is trapped. <laughs> Welcome to the first episode of Brain Buzz, where we delve into the fascinating world of neurosciences and brain health. I'm your host, Dr. Kimon Bekalis. And I'm your co-host, Jason Wall. Um, I'm a neurosurgeon by training. Uh, I came to Long Island, um, how long ago, Jason, now? Six years? Six to seven years yeah. ago, yeah. And so we, um, Jason and I started a program that treats strokes, brain aneurysms, and blood vessel problems of the brain in general. Uh, we have a tremendous team in the hospital and outside of the hospital. Uh, with uh, folks that uh, really care about the patients, uh, nurses, technologists, physicians, um, support staff, uh, advanced practice providers. So they they're all have done a phenomenal job and we're very proud of what we've done. It was a unique opportunity to make a difference and I thought it's either now or never. And I was here and I started working on the program. I never had doubts. Um, in my mind, failure was not an option. I knew the strengths we had. I knew the impact that we could make. And I knew the team that we had built. Without you, we cannot do the procedure. Of course, you know, it's... Uh, when you say me, you mean a technologist. Technologist, <laughs> yes. The plural you. Yeah. Uh, we cannot really do the procedure. You guys are there. Um, and, and folks will tell you guys that, you know, when I do a procedure and I'm there with a technologist, I rarely have to ask for something. They see what I'm doing, they understand the challenges, they ask for the next thing already before I even get a chance to ask for it. And that's the person you want by your side. That's the person you want in your case if you're a patient. I think when I interviewed there, it was uh, the ICU was still an office. Unit, that's right. right? <laughs> I was gonna ask that if it was even existed when you came. No, it didn't. So you really believed in the vision. Oh, 100%. Uh, another thing that we rarely talk about is the training that went into this, right? And so when we started, Nobody really knew much about what we do these days, and today it's a reflex for everybody, right? So Javad had to train the APPs, the advanced practice providers, he had to train the nurses, and so he did a lot of that on the fly, even without a real unit yet. But one of the biggest challenges I think that we have on uh, in medicine uh, today is kind of how fast-paced it is and the requirements to see more and more people and kind of get through uh, a substantial amount of workload, and I think doctor-patient communication becomes secondary tertiary sometimes and patients suffer, you know, I think medical decision-making suffers, and then, um, you know, folks complain often, or they, they don't feel uh, as informed about their medical care. One thing I just really think is important to mention right at the beginning is that um, uh, recent years, I would say, uh, having access to so many different opinions and uh, medical knowledge out there, actually i believe made our job a little bit more difficult right so the patient come to the office uh, by having a keyword aneurysm brain aneurysm that's right this way and they google research whatever <laughs> so basically half of your time is probably is consumed by explaining why is wrong what you read and right. it's not your case and it's not going to happen we are shifting towards making things more clear just because there's so much more information out there. Yeah, so many patients feel like they got their degree from WebMD. Yeah, right, <laughs> right, right, right. But you know, the, 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 that's a time consuming thing yeah. to make things right. Well, we get activated when something bad happens to a patient and we're, we're all hoping to put ourselves out of business at least when we're able to prevent a stroke, right? And 80% of strokes are preventable. Overall, there's 10 million new cases of dementia globally wow. every year. Wow. Every 40 seconds somebody has a heart attack in this country and every 40 seconds somebody has a stroke in this country. Wow. So what does that tell me? That tells me we are doing a lousy job as health promoters of promoting health. We're doing an amazing job, especially guys like you, in saving people right. from dying and disabling diseases. I, I learned so much from my war experience. I'm practicing in a war zone because the one thing you need to know how to manage is essentially the people around you. Because like, to your point, everybody's scared. scared. People around you are scared and the patients are probably more scared than anybody else. So you end up uh, uh, needing to absorb that anxiety and so absorb all of that. And even the way you deal with your partners and your colleagues is gonna be very careful because everybody's sitting on the edge of their seat. Everybody's really anxious. Tell me a little bit how 
artificial intelligence fits into um, the identification of stroke through rapid and through perfusion images that you described. So having all that imaging available at the, your fingertips, that, that was a huge advance for, for AI. We've, we've had the same experience when it comes to, to rapid. One of the surprises to us is the uptake by, by some ER docs. Right. Uh, because ER docs have typically not really been terribly oriented to or interested. detailed nerve. <laughs> And one of the things I know that, that frustrates them is when they call to transfer a patient and when a neurologist is asking all sorts of questions and, right. you know, they really just want to get a yes or no answer and move back into their ER. Right. And so now we get calls from ER docs that say, hey, the rapid shows there's 50 <laughs> cc's of salvageable tissue. This looks like a great case. And right. the answer is, yeah, we send the helicopter, send the ambulance. And right. it's just, you know, huge time saved. Thank you for being with us today. My pleasure. Thank yes. you. Thank you much. You've seen it all. You've done it all. Thank you. Thank you. Take care.